Hey guys, this is Ix Roll at Ix with the Rollout Reviews, bringing you another Crossfight Beat'em-On review. This time it is CB75 Meteor Bomber Battle Set. We'll take a quick look at the box here. There is the front, and there is the back. Now, obviously, this is a very large set. It's about two and a half feet long this way and two feet deep this way. But most of it is cardboard. So first, we'll take a look at all of the plastic elements and everything else the set comes with. First off, you get 20 glass Bidama, and that is great. The original Break Bomber, the Takara version, only came with 12, and honestly, that wasn't enough for a full-blown head-to-head match. In this set, you get just about everything you need to play a two-player game right out of the box. Speaking of which, in this set you get two Proto-1 Beat'em-On, both in white, one with red hold parts, and the other with light blue hold parts. Now that doesn't mean that this is a power type and this is a rapid fire type. They are virtually exactly the same and perform identically. Now they do look a little bit boring, and if you want to spice them up, this set does come with a sizable sticker sheet. On it are some stickers for these guys, so feel free to apply those if you would like. Not only are these guys identical to each other, they are also identical to the Proto-1 that comes in the original Break Bomber set. Now in that review, I didn't go into too much detail with this guy, so we'll take a closer look at these guys now. Proto-1 is the simplest beat-em-on in the core change system if you can even consider him part of it. He's only comprised of about six pieces. A front part, a back part, the hold parts, the trigger, and two arms. That doesn't leave a whole lot of room for customization. You can't swap his head, his core, or his feet, and his arms don't require bolts, so you can't swap them out for anything either. However, you do have some ports at the front here, so he is compatible with all crossfire and crossfight barrels. Towards the back, you can also see you can attach a magazine back here. There's an appropriate amount of room, a hook down below, and a peg there, so you can attach power blocks and stabilizers. There's also a slot here, so you can attach trigger attachments as well. So, he's not completely uncustomizable. We'll do a quick power test here, load him up, and get out our Beast PV. So, for the first test, 2.33, and for the second test, 2.08. So, a pretty wide range there. He's not the most powerful, quick-firing, or accurate beat -em on but with enough customization, he can easily hold his own against some of the more complex starters. Of course, you get three Meteor Bomber pucks in this set. They do look a little bit boring, just in solid black, so you do get three brightly colored stickers that you can apply if you would like to do so. They're pretty light, pretty hollow, but I suppose that's only necessary for them to work properly. They get the job done, and that's all I could ask for. Here is one of the mechanisms. You get two of these, one in blue and one in red. Since all of this is hidden behind cardboard, once all is said and done, we'll take a quick look at exactly how the mechanism works. You have this goal here, and there's a little lever sticking out of the top, which attaches to a blockade in this opening here. When we launch a puck in there, it will collapse that blockade and send the second puck out. This is all attached to this little slider here. It's on a pivot for ease of access, and if we slide that forward, it will re-engage the system. That's how it works, and it's pretty cool. Now you have a second lever here that can only be hit if there's already a puck in the goal, so you need two pucks in the goal to win. By hitting that, it launches up this winner's flag. Now, this looks a little bit boring. Once again, there's a sticker on the sheet if you want to make that look a bit more interesting. And really, that's it. It's a simple gravity system and a simple hinge system. Nothing too fancy going on here. So we'll do a quick demo. You can see there's a little lip on the top of one of the pucks here that goes into the... Uh, top of the mechanism there. There's a couple of little grooves so that it only goes in one way, just like that. If we launch the first puck in, it will send the second one rolling out onto the field. And then if we launch that one in, 
it will bring up the flag. A lot of the time, this system is pretty finicky. Sometimes your beat -em on isn't powerful enough to launch this in all the way, and so you're stuck in this position where there's no way of getting this puck out with just marbles. You have to pull it out, so it's, it's kind of like you've already won, but you're not actually hitting it hard enough to deploy the flag, and it's, it's kind of annoying. Uh, as you can see here, there's a gap at the back, so you can uh, simply pull these out. Now, specifically with the blue one, right out of the box, I had a little bit of a problem where when I launched the first puck in, it actually wouldn't deploy the second puck. Something got caught. And if you have a similar problem, it's not unfixable. It's just a little bit annoying. Basically, this is two sections in the box. You have this bottom piece and this top piece, which is screwed together. Uh, disassembling this once you've snapped it together is a little bit scary. There's stress marks involved Involved, but uh, be careful and I don't think you'll break it. You can sort of see how it clips there at the bottom. Basically, I just disassembled it, unscrewed this, and I had to do a little bit of investigating to see exactly what the problem is, but all I needed to do in the end was use my X-Acto knife and shave off a little bit of plastic. Uh, you might need a parental unit of some kind to help you with that. Uh, but that's a little bit annoying, but it's probably just quality control and won't be an issue with yours. Last but not least, you get all of these tiny, tiny little plastic bits that sort of hold the cardboard arena together. You have these little clips here that secure the walls, and you have these little cap pieces here that secure the actual mechanisms to the cardboard walls and there's quite a few of them. I think you at least get a single extra for each type, but there's like 10 of these and like 10 of these. So all I can really say is don't lose too many of them. All right, so here is the battlefield all set up. There's about four or five pieces of cardboard that fold and fasten together, including these tiny little pieces back here that do absolutely nothing. They're supposed to support the battlefield from the back, but they sort of just slide in loosely, and if you move it around, they'll just fall off. So that's a little bit weird. But it's pretty simple to assemble. You'll notice a crease here and here. This center section is actually raised. If you remember earlier, there was no ramp leading up to these goals if it's not attached to the cardboard. Um, so the ramp is this cardboard section here. And it's worth noting that there is no support beneath it. So basically just don't step on it. Um, you have all of these different areas. Of course, you have the shooting area here with a, a border line. Uh, this is where your beat -em on goes. You can move it around all inside here. There's also little spaces here for your marbles. There's 12 spaces in each of the corners, so 12 bidama for each player. But again, the set only comes with 20. 10 for each player is, is perfect, though. You don't really need that whole 12. They're just there if you want them. Just like with Break Bomber, these spaces are really unreliable reliable and marbles won't stay there. They'll just roll around. So what I like doing is just taking a little Tupperware thing, putting my marbles in there and setting it off to the side until I use them. Just keeps things tidy. Of course, once the marbles are on the field, they stay in the field and you can't put them back into the Tupperware. Uh, but until that happens, uh, it's just a nice thing to have. This second area here says reloaded okay. This is the reload area. You can't move your beat -em on into this area, but if marbles are in this area, uh, you can can touch them, you can grab them and, and reload. Uh, this third area here, the battlefield itself, is completely off limits to hands and to beat them on. That's just there for the marbles you shoot at the pucks and, of course, the pucks themselves. You have the backboard back here, of course, you have the two goals, and then you have three little uh, sections on the battlefield itself, labeled one, two, and three. Those will come into play with both single player and multiplayer games. So, to set this up, of course, you place the two beat -em on in their areas, you give marbles to each player, and then you basically just make sure those sliders are locked so that the, the blockades are up, load a puck into each of the towers, and then for the first round, you're going to set the puck on the one. 
So we'll do some quick demos going through all of the rounds of a game. Now usually you'd have a limited supply of marbles, like I said, 10 or 12, but for the sake of these in this video I'm just going to use my entire supply as I show this off. Of course the objective is pretty self-explanatory. You try and hit this puck into the goal using your marbles. It's sort of like a modified air hockey. Let's get started. Three, two, one. Be fight! And there you go. That is essentially the first round. Now as you saw, the tower launched a second puck and it rolled over into the opponent's playing field. That's pretty clever. Uh, like I said earlier, the pucks have a little lip around the top and uh, on this side it's sort of facing this way and on this side it's facing this way so that it'll always arc towards the player who didn't score the goal. So it sort of gives them a little bit of an advantage if they think quickly because then they can shoot at it and a couple of times in the past that has rolled out and I have hit it straight into the goal and the game keeps going into round three. But that's very difficult to do. More often than not it'll just roll into the shooting area and you can reset. Now any time the puck goes into the shooting area, uh, rule of thumb, I always consider that out of bounds because there really isn't any practical way to continue shooting it into the playing field. So if it goes beyond that area, I, uh, I just usually put it back on the number that it's on and then we, we start the round over again. But let's go into round two. Of course, the transition between round one and round two could be instantaneous. The second it flies out of the goal, you can hit it back into play, and it continues like nothing ever happened. But if it does roll out of bounds or get shot out of bounds, any time during round two, when you reset, instead of putting it on the one space, you're gonna put it on the two space. Again, this gives a little bit of a chance for the losing player to redeem themselves, because it's extremely easy to shoot this puck right into the goal because it's right in front of it. So as long as the losing player is quick thinking, they can avenge their mistake. Of course, the other player has that same advantage, and if they shoot theirs right into the goal as well, they win at round two. But let's give the losing player the benefit of the doubt to make things a little bit more interesting and just pretend they even the score. Just like that. Of course, it'll either arc to the center or arc into this playing field, and the game keeps going. On to round three. The three puck positions might be a little bit more clever than you think. It's sort of a scale of difficulty as the game goes on. In round one, it's sort of set to a medium difficulty. It's not that simple to shoot this straight into the goal with a single shot. On the contrary, if you have a powerful, accurate shot, it's pretty simple to actually shoot this right into the goal, giving the losing player a chance once again. In round three, it is the hardest difficulty. It's the furthest away from the goals and at the strangest angle. So we'll continue our demo from there. Three, two, one, be fight. Well, I stand corrected. That was pretty simple. As you can see, I hit it into the goal, and there's no real way of getting it out unless I pull it out. But the flag isn't up. This is what I was talking about earlier. It's a bit finicky that way. So basically, I just kind of have to keep shooting at it until that happens. Sometimes it just takes one extra shot. Other times it'll take several. But as you can see, now that I have two pucks in the goal, the flag has gone up, and I have won against nobody in particular. Feeling a bit lonely, I suppose now it's time to take a look at the single player options. For this, you're actually only going to need two of the three pucks, and neither of them are going to be loaded into the towers. They're gonna go directly 
on the battlefield, like this. The objective is to knock both of the pucks into the goal in either an allotted amount of time or with an allotted amount of marbles. Once again, there are levels of difficulty here. This is the simplest configuration. You have one on medium and one on easy. The medium overall configuration is moving this one over here. So you have one on hard and one on easy. And last but not least, the most difficult configuration is putting one on medium and one on hard. You aren't granted with that walk in the park shot in the middle. So we'll do a quick demo of this on the hard difficulty. Before we get started, I wanted to address a little bit of a single player strategy. Say I sort of screw up and accidentally shoot the puck way over here. It's not quite in the reset zone, but it's very difficult to line up the shot so that it goes in this direction. In this case, instead of being lazy and just saying, oh, that's a reset and putting it back, I'd say that you probably should waste a marble or waste a little bit of time to shoot it into the reset zone and then start over. But that's just my two cents. Three, two, one, be fight! And there you go. Initially, I really didn't want this set because of the massive cardboard content. Like 80% of the money you pay for this is buying nothing but cardstock. And because of this, at the time of release, online prices were extremely demanding. Anywhere from 60 to 80 US dollars. When I bought this a little while back, I got it for 25 to 30 bucks, and for that price, I'd say it's completely worth it, so that's not an issue. My biggest problem with this set is something I mentioned earlier. There aren't any ramps on the Meteor Bomber towers themselves. Without the Cardboard Arena, they're pretty much useless. With Break Bomber, you didn't need walls to play the game. The tower works just fine without them. With this, however, the entire game is completely reliant on a flimsy sheet of cardboard. This means that if somebody accidentally steps on it, tearing or crumpling up the playing field, or if you accidentally spill your drink on it, the whole set is more or less ruined completely. Of course, at that point, you could try making a new arena yourself, or maybe salvage parts from the damaged arena to make your own ramps for the towers. But it's all a bit scary. That said, as far as the game itself functions, I honestly like this a lot better than Break Bomber. In that game, there's a wall between you and your opponent, both literally and figuratively. You're pretty much focused on your own actions, and they have little to do with your opponent's decisions. Meteor Bomber feels much more like a fast-paced, head-to-head -head experience. It's friendly towards single-player options as well, and in my opinion, it's a much more engaging battle set overall. So, that is about it guys, and this is IXRollerIX, signing off.